we got to know Jim, and uh, I, my, my wife is a, is, is a wonderful gardener. She's been gardening for 30 years. She's actually a certified master gardener. She just sent me a text. Hold it. Um, I, I, got this, I have to read to you. Oh. Just ate the first sugar snap pea. Mmm, good. Very sweet. Rats, I'm not there. I planted them. We got 120 rows of sugar snap peas. And I'm not there. Okay. 120 plants of sugar snap peas. Yes, thanks. She got the first one. Yeah, half an acre. Um, but anyway, the sugar snap peas are right here in this box right here in my Nilata garden. But what happened is I, I met Jim about 18 months ago, and uh, we were trying several different gardening methods. My wife is a fantastic gardener. We have been married 30 years. We've moved 17 times. She's had 17 gardens. When we built our house in Houston, uh, she laid out the garden area and said the house can go anywhere else on the property. So she's serious about gardening. And she loves gardening. But uh, the last few years, it's kind of worn on her. Uh, it's a lot of work. I've watched her for 30 years. I've paid for the dirt. I've paid for the fertilizers. I've paid for the bone meal and the blood meal. And, I, you know, and I'm, I was convinced I never want to be a gardener, ever. It was way too much work and way too expensive. But she still had problems. Any of you still have problems with bugs in your gardens? Okay, any of you have problems with diseases in your garden? As good as she was, uh, she still had those problems. And so I'm the husband, I figure I need to fi fix the problem, right? That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, we have some guys, smart guys laughing, yeah. With your wife's permission, you can fix the problem. And so uh, I started trying some different gardening methods and without me realizing what I was doing, I actually created a laboratory in my backyard. This is my backyard in Houston. And I could stand in one place and see the broccoli growing here in the back of the Eden Garden, the broccoli growing here in the organic garden, the broccoli growing over here hydroponically in the mid ladder garden. And I could, all of a sudden I had a comparison. And that was an eye opener to me. So this is my backyard garden. And I'm going to share with you my experience. Um, and I found, I found the mid ladder method about 18 months ago. So this is my back to Eden Garden broccoli. Looks pretty sad, doesn't it? It's tiny. That that little dish, that thing is about that big. That's our lip balm. We have honeybees in our backyard, so we make our own lip balm. And that's to give you a comparison. But that, uh, Jim mentioned that the back deep garden method where you chop up all the, the trees and the leaves and so forth and you plant in it. And I was so excited about that. I did videos on it for two years until I realized it didn't work. <laughs> And I, I loved it because I didn't have to spend any money on anything, I didn't have to water, I didn't have to fertilize, I just stuck the plant in there and everything would grow. Well, uh, I took this photo because that, I just couldn't stand it any longer. That little plant wouldn't get any bigger and it, it threw out flowers, what it, which means it's, 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 it's done, right? And I knew broccoli was supposed to get bigger, and but this is when I learned what Jim, this is when I, when I understood what I learned from Jim when he talked about head and hunger. This plant couldn't get any bigger because it didn't have the nutrition to get any bigger. It wasn't in the chopped up trees and leaves and pine needles. It just wasn't there. Now, uh, I learned that and I could tell from a comparison because eight feet away, over here in my mid ladder garden, I planted a broccoli six weeks after I planted this one and this is the result I got from my mid ladder garden. Now that's a broccoli hat, okay? And that is fully uh, developed, huge, flavorful, sweet broccoli uh, because it has all the nutrition. Now, if we fed our kids Captain Crunch and hot dogs all day, they wouldn't die, but they wouldn't be healthy, would they? Okay, they wouldn't grow to the, the full potential. And that's what we're finding in plants. And uh, what I'm also finding is that our plants grow much faster using all the, uh, getting all the nutrients that they need. Back to the back to Eden Garden, here is a cabbage, and I was actually pretty proud of it. It looked good until I compared it to the cabbage about six feet away over the mid ladder garden box that was planted also six weeks after I planted this cabbage. Now, then I harvested the um, back to Eden Garden cabbage and put it right next to the mid ladder cabbage. 
Those are side by side. What a difference. And it's because I had that comparison, I knew I was, you know, I was growing things. And I went to a garden uh, earlier this, this week and I said, we can, we can get five times the production out of your garden with what you're doing right now by following the midliner principles. He was doing a lot of things right, but he, the, the plants didn't have the nutrition they needed. And I could just tell by looking at the plants. So if he follows the midliner gardening method, he'll be able to triple, quadruple, quintuple, whatever his output, simply by following these rules. Um, my wife loves beets. Now, um, she will plant 100 beet seeds inside, germinate them, and then plant them outside in her garden. And she had some beet seeds left over, or beet seedlings. And so she said, do you want some in your garden? Now, I have to tell you that uh, when, when, I, when I found out about the Midland Gardening Method 18 months ago, um, I found out that Jim did seminars, and I asked him if he'd come to Houston to do a seminar for me. I figured if, if this is really works, I want him to teach me in my own backyard how to do this. And we'll be able to see this over at the garden here in a few minutes. Uh, you know, there's a lot we can do on a slideshow, but there's a whole different experience where we can get our hands dirty, all right? We're actually going to mix the nutrients, we're going to prepare the soil, we're going to show you how to properly plant plants. We're going to do it all there to answer these questions that you're having. We're going to actually do it in front of you, do it with you, and you're going to help us. Um, anybody, anybody here have a gym membership to an exercise gym, health gym, anybody? Okay, keep the hands up. Okay, we need all you guys on shovels. Okay, rakes. We just got a crew right there, Jim, okay? Um, so Jim Dead actually did come, to your word, uh, he came down and did two seminars for me a mile away from my house at our steak center. My wife didn't attend either seminar. She's a 30-year gardener. She's a certified master gardener. What is she going to learn? Then they came, Jim came to our backyard, and she didn't even come to the backyard. <laughs> I mean, what's she going to learn, right? I mean, she, uh, she knows way more than I ever did in gardening. So she said, do you want some of these beet, seed, uh, beet uh, plants in your garden? It was like, your garden. You know, I have nothing to do with your garden. It's your garden. Okay, here's my garden. Now, her garden had the designer soil in it, right? We could have gone to Europe on the money I spent on her dirt. All right? It's expensive dirt. I am not exaggerating. We spent a lot of money on that dirt. And so she was pretty proud of her garden. Well, what happened is that we, I planted, so I planted my beet, uh, the beets in my garden, the same day that she planted her beets in her garden. And I harvested these the same day. You can see the difference. And she was doing everything she knew to do to uh, feed her plants and help them grow. And I had, I'm on the east side of the house, so at noon, I start getting shadows in my garden. And she has, she's on the south side. She gets from morning to night full sun. And I'm still out producing her. Matter of fact, I outproduced her six to one. And I was taking baskets full of produce to my neighbors every Monday before she was even harvesting. And then it was every Monday and Thursday when they, everything started really coming on. And then she started just harvesting. So she watched me do this for quite a while. Here's 120 rows, 120 plants of sugar snap peas. They ended up being nine feet tall. They grew up seven feet and then back down two feet. It was like, I even have a video, I give up. You know, they, they win. I did, you know, they're not supposed to grow that big, but they produce thousands and thousands and thousands of sugar snap peas. One of which my wife just ate today. <laughs> and she's loving it too. Um, because she knows she can sit there and eat for another three or four weeks before I can get it ever get home. But these are so flavorful. Some, uh, the number one term, the number one word I hear when people come to our garden is wow. Wow. Because they taste the flavor, the sweetness of the, of the plant because they have all the nutrients to produce the sugars they need to be uh, flavorful. Uh, here's my potato garden. You saw the sweet potato video uh, here on this left side uh, of the garden here, right here. Those are the little slips I grew from my sweet potatoes. Got 139 pounds of sweet potatoes. I actually had a friend, a beekeeper friend over there at our garden when I was done planting the sweet potatoes and I was just making rid of the, my seed potatoes, the ones I bought my wife bought at the grocery store. She said, can I have them? And I said, sure. So she took them. She also grew another 100 pounds of sweet potatoes from those. 
And she told me at a beekeeper's meeting that she gave those potatoes to somebody else and they grew another 100 pounds of sweet potatoes, all using the Midlandic gardening method. Uh, here on the other side I have our red potatoes and we, I planted 5 pounds and harvested 50 pounds. Uh, here is huge, a healthy uh, uh, cauliflower. Now all these leaves here on the side, uh, those should be harvested and eaten. Well, I use those in green smoothies every morning. I had a green smoothie this morning for breakfast. Softball size onions. I had never grown onions before. This is my first year of gardening right here. These pictures are from my first year. I never wanted to be a gardener. I love gardening. Here's tomatoes, huge, beautiful tomatoes. You can see growing up the twine, and we'll show you that in the garden. Uh, here's, uh, this is one of the kind of weird things. It's an inverted teepee. And I, when I grew up, you know, learning from what my wife taught is you grow in a teepee, right? Well, here it's inverted, and it's so much more, makes so much more sense. We'll show that in the garden. Here is a 20-foot uh, grow box. And I, here I have sand and sawdust. I could have used any soil. I could have used pine needles. I could have used perlite. I could have used peat moss. It didn't really make any difference what the soil is. Or designer soil like my wife's garden. Uh, but I, I spent over $1,000 for soil in her garden. And I spent $120 for soil in my garden. And I outproduced her 6 to 1. It's not the dirt. So what we did find out is that in my garden... Well, she asked if we could call it our garden. So, and <laughs> where I planted the plants, they grew substantially faster. I didn't have the bug problems that she had because I had healthy plants. God created the bugs to come get rid of the dead and dying plants. Does that make sense? But that they weren't, mine weren't dead and dying. I also, we also found out that the diseases that she had weren't diseases. They were malnutrition. They were symptoms of malnutrition. Okay, so when we go to the doctor, the first thing they do is they look at us, right? What, they're looking for symptoms, and these plants are showing these symptoms. Now we can look at our plant and go, oh, that needs magnesium. Oh, that needs a little bit of phosphorus. And then we know exactly what to do. And we learned that from the Midlandic Garden Method. But here, I've, I've, got, I've got bell peppers. Then right next to bell peppers, I've got cucumbers growing vertically. Then I, right next to them, I've got camel. Here's a camel hanging right there. Then I've got a watermelon. I, I like to grow the sugar baby watermelon that, and grow them vertically. Then I have green beans right here, all growing in one box. When my wife left to uh, uh, Idaho Falls a few weeks ago for seven weeks, and I ate out of a, a, a 10 foot by 18 inch box for seven weeks, and my entire grocery bill was $17 in seven weeks. Uh, you literally can't feed your family from your backyard. If you follow the six principles that Jim taught you and use the Midliner method. Here's the first um, bell peppers I ever grew. First cucumbers that I harvested. Here's the cantaloupe and the watermelon that I was growing. It was awesome. Then we realized we could use it on other things. And so my wife was, uh, uh, she was thinning out her strawberries and she pulls off the runners and plants the runners and she has some extra runners. So she gave me the runners. She said, you can put those in your garden. And uh, these are my strawberries that I was eating a month before her strawberries. I, that's not true. I gave her a strawberry week so she would be able to have a strawberry. Happy wife, happy life. I understand how this works. And uh, but uh, disease-free, bug-free, uh, high production, super sweet. Uh, this is what my wife was using in her garden. You may be familiar with the... Uh, we got uh, fish emulsion, and we got seaweed extract, and we got the organic fertilizer there, and we got the molasses for the foliar. You know, we were using all that stuff. What a headache! Um, then one day I saw her with a can of Midlighter Weekly Feed in her garden. <laughs> so I quickly grabbed my camera and took a photo um, from my phone, and uh, didn't say anything. And she uh, she she came over and said, "Can you teach me what you're doing?" And I thought, what? I, I never wanted to be a gardener. And I said, why? And she said, because you work so much less than I do. She didn't say because you outproduced me six to one. But she said, because you work so much less. And it, it had become drudgery for her as much as she loved it. And now she loves gardening. She works a fraction of the time. Her yields are tremendously... Matter of fact, let me just show you. 
here's her kale. It just actually exploded. So you hear some of that designer soil in it that has the 3 8 uh, uh, screened leaf mold compost and the, the super pure sand and all this other stuff that's in there. Um, so she didn't change anything. I'm not taking out that $1,000 soil, okay? So she didn't change anything in a garden, but she started using the, the, the nutrition regimen with the Midlife Gardening Method and making sure she followed the other six, the other five laws. And uh, the lettuce just went crazy. We couldn't eat lettuce fast enough. The spinach, we would we would literally clear all the spinach out and a week later it will look just like that again. Okay? And we found out that thinning really helps plants grow faster. Um, here, then we started applying it to her berries, blackberries. And then we started planting it to our, our giving it the nutrients to our fruit trees and our ornamental trees. Yes, absolutely amazing. What you have learned this morning, you now know more than 99.999 to the nth degree than any other gardener, okay? My wife is now back home. The Master Midlander Gardening Association uh, had came to her and said, would you please put in four Midlander Gardening beds at, at the Master Gardening Association? And she is over there now teaching master gardeners how to grow successfully by using the Midlander Gardening Method. And so we're trying, doing everything we can to help people grow their own food. It does work. Pay attention. When you get to the garden, you will see this all in action and uh, it will all come together. Thank you very much.